I'll be showing seven new features in Outlook 365. This includes the new collaborative loop components, scheduling polls for those complex calendar tasks, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is Loop Component Support in Outlook for the Web. Loop is our collaborative technology that lets you real-time collaborate with lots of people with different components. I've got an email here, and I'm gonna insert a collaborative table so we can fill out our TPS report redesign offsite information. So I'm gonna to go to the Insert menu, and you're gonna see Loop Component right here. Now I drop this down, and you have many different choices. Tasks are popular, you can do q and I'm gonna do a table, so I'll click here, this is added in the loop component, and this is a collaborative table, and I'll show how it works when I send out the email. So I'm gonna give it a title and a couple of column headers. So I filled out some column headers here and a couple of rows, and you can see there's a couple of options in this loop component. First off over here, you can see who has access to controlling access to this. Now when I send it to these folks inside of my organization, they will have the ability to real-time collaborate because I sent it to them. There's other things like copying the component and even looking at shared locations. And also what I'll show later is this will create a loop page in our M365 homepage. I'll show what that looks like. But for now, my table's ready and I'm gonna send it out to a few people up here on the to line and I'll hit send. Now I've sent this out and we're gonna switch over to Ella and Ashley and I'm gonna show in real time what it looks like when they co-author that table. Now here we are side by side. We had Ashley and Ella up and they've both got a mail from Kara. So I'm gonna open this and I'll open it up over on the right-hand side too. Now here are the mails, and I can see that Ella is in this, and over on the right-hand side, I can see that Ashley is in here too. And as I type here, watch how fast this co-authors. You can even see that the AK little bubble on the right-hand side has shown up. You'll see as I type in real time on the right-hand side, it comes across. Ooh, that's blasphemy. Why do we even need TPS reports? And you see the little dots going when I was typing. Andy owns that item. I'm putting his name next to it. And you can see it's very easy to collaborate in real time. So as I'm putting in different numbers here, you can see them appear over on the right-hand side in real time and things change. Now as a bonus, we're gonna switch back to Kara Coleman. She maybe wants to see how that table is coming along. And there's a link here that'll open up the loop page. So I'm gonna switch back to my Kara Coleman account. I'm here as Kara and I'm gonna to go to my sent items. And here is that message that I sent. And here is the link to that loop page. And you know, Kara can already see that things have been happening. So I'll click this to open up the loop page. Here's the loop page in M365. It's fully collaborative. I can even sort these things. So I can sort, I can say add a sort and say top TPS versus who owns. I wanna sort by who owns. And there's the empty ones. I wanna sort descending. So there's lots of nice things that you can do in this loop page, and this is still collaborative. So Kara can co-author here while the other people have those mail loop components open. The second new feature is that scheduling polls are now built into Outlook. I'm gonna address a message here. Okay, I wanna find the best time for these four folks and myself to get a TPS report planning offsite on our calendars. What I'll do next is click insert, and built in now is scheduling poll. I'll click this. This opens up a pane on the right-hand side, and you'll see my meeting 30 minutes by default. Here's the date and the availability of all the different people. So there's five of us, and if I expand this, it has all the different people that I'm inviting, including myself, and I'll collapse it. Now this reads my own calendar, and it reads their calendars, and it has a nice little free busy laid out like this. If you scroll down, there are some other times where you can see some people are out or they might not be available. So I'm gonna scroll up, and I'll choose a couple different times. We'll say 11 a.m., 2.30 and three. And I want people to vote on which of those times works best. Now I just click next. I can enter the location. In this case, it'll be a Teams meeting. I can also manage my poll settings since I've set this up. Right here, there's a few options. I'm not gonna go through all of these. You can even lock the poll for attendees. So after they respond and you don't want them to change it, you can lock that poll. An important one is hold selected times on my calendar. So what this means is it'll put a tentative block on my calendar for each of these three times here that I'm choosing since I'm the meeting organizer and I don't yet know what people are going to choose. So I'll click create poll. Okay, the poll's ready to be shared. Right here it inserts this little card and this is gonna let people vote. There's three time options. And if you have other polls, you might have multiple scheduling polls going on, they'll be able to click that link as well. So I'm gonna click send. Now let's switch over to one of the people who received the mail and show what it looks like on the attendee side. Okay, I'm signed in as Ashley and here is the scheduling poll from Kara Coleman about the TPS report planning offsite. 
I'm going to choose to vote here. This takes me right into the area where I can choose where I this launches me right into the scheduling poll area. I can see the required attendees. I can see how others voted, if they had or not. It looks like Kara, she's the organizer. She can make all three of these times. So I can say, yes, I prefer this one best, and I can't make that time. I could also propose another time as well. And I could even add other attendees if I wanted to forward to them equivalent. But I'll just choose vote. Okay, vote submitted. And we'll have one more person vote really quickly and switch back to Kara. Okay, I'm signed in as Kara. It looks like a couple of different people have voted. So this lets me know the different voting patterns. Okay, she prefers this, yes to this, no to that, and a couple of other updates. What I can do next is, as the organizer, I'm gonna go view all my polls and see the overall status here. So let's go say view poll. And I can quickly tell right here, it looks like two people prefer 2.30. And there's some people who say this time is fine. I'll wait till the other folks like Bill Lumberg and Alex respond, but you can get a sense of exactly how this works. And now what you can do is schedule a meeting right from this poll area. The third new feature is calendar filtering. I'll switch to my calendar here. And there's a new option right here called filter. And this lets me quickly filter my calendar. So let's drop it down. Maybe first I wanna see meetings where I'm the organizer. There we go. So that's my meeting where I'm the organizer. If I wanna go just to appointments, there's a single appointment. I can go and filter on show as. So just showing my oof ones. Here's my out of office physical simulation. And if I wanna go back to all, so very easy to filter your calendar. You even have categories. Let's see all the green ones. Okay, there we go. The fourth new feature is support for interactive embedding of YouTube videos in your email. So I'm gonna send a mail to Bill Lumberg about this amazing Outlook tips and tricks video. I just paste the link and look at that. It renders the video right here as a card in the body, and when I send this, Bill can click this and play the video really easy. So here you go, Bill. The fifth new feature is message reactions. I have a mail here from Bill Lumberg. He needs me to come in on a Saturday. Well, you know what? I can go to the smiley face here. I'm gonna be a team player. That sounds awesome, Bill. We're gonna give a little celebration emoji. You have a couple other options. You know, if you're sad about that, you can give it a crying emoji. The sixth new feature is Outlook bookings with me. I'm here in the M365 homepage and I'm gonna go over and click Outlook. Next up, let's click on Calendar in the upper left here. What you're gonna see is this Create Booking page. This is a brand new entry. This is Bookings with Me, which means you can now set your calendar so people can book things like office hours or one-on-ones or sync up time directly from this Bookings with Me page. So I'll click Create Booking page. Okay, here's the welcome. I'll click Got It here. Now the way this works is, Kara Coleman, who I'm playing right here, I can set up public or private meetings that people can book with me. That means they can be publicly available on a web page, or I can send direct links to people so they can book my schedule. For example, I'm gonna create a new appointment here and click plus, and it'll be office hours. I could add a category, I'll give it a quick description. I could set the time, so 30 minutes or longer, we'll leave it simple at 30. I'm gonna leave this example public, which means if I have a public booking page, maybe I'm a small business, maybe I'm a university professor, there's lots of reasons why you might have a public booking page, that's where it's gonna appear. You can also set it to be private. And what that means is only the people who have a direct link from you can open up that. But we'll leave this one as public. Right here it says, use my regular meeting hours. I can change that, I can set them to be custom if I want. But in general, I'm gonna have regular meeting hours. I've got mine set between nine and five. What's gonna happen is people who try to book this, Outlook will analyze Kara's schedule on her end and make sure she's already booked. And the person booking can analyze their own schedule and then easily find a place and a time to meet. And if you wanna see your regular meeting hours, you can just click that link there. At the bottom, there are some advanced options as well. So you can set things like buffer time before the meeting starts or after it ends. You can also say when it starts and a couple of other things around minimum lead time and maximum lead time. You can play around with those, but we're gonna keep this simple for our demo here. By default, we also make this a Teams meeting. You could turn that off if you wanna meet in person, but I will leave this as a Teams meeting and I'll click Save. You can see that this has been added to my public booking area and I can create a bunch of different slots if I wanted. I'm gonna keep this one safe you can also add a private link as well. So let's quickly add one here. So I've created a private one, the super secret TPS report planning session. And you'll see there's little three dot menus on each of these as well as a share button up here. So if I hit the three dot menu, I can copy this link, I can share it, I can duplicate it, 
I can choose to make this a private booking page meetings if I want, I'm not going to, or delete. And right here on the three dot menu, it's similar, but I can also copy this as a single use link. So that can mean the first time it's used, the whole link expires. And the share button, if I drop this down, I can copy the link. I can send this whole booking page link via email. I can even add this to my email signature. So the way to think about this is the share button gives people access to your entire booking page. So if I want to put this on a website or put it in my email signature, then people can look at my public booking page entries. I can also then send out individual links. So in this case, maybe I want to send an individual link to this meeting to a certain set of people or the private one. So you have lots of different options. In this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my overall booking page in email. So I'm going to send this email to my good friend, Bill Lumberg. So let's click this and we'll address it to him. Add a message. Okay, my message is ready to send. I'm going to send my booking page link off to Bill Lumberg. I'll hit send. Now I'll sign in as Bill Lumberg and we can see what it looks like on his end. I'm signed in as Bill Lumberg and here is a message from Kara Coleman. It says, I encourage you to book time so we can talk about the latest in a tech happenings. That sounds like an awesome meeting. So I'm going to go click book meeting. Now this pulls up Kara Coleman's booking page and here's that public booking slot right here. And also, by the way, up in the right, it encourages Bill Lumberg to make his own booking page so anyone can create a bookings page, but I'm going to close this here. Now what you see under available times is Outlook is looking at Kara's calendar and what's open and it's mapping it to my calendar and showing when I'm available. So I can click on a date here and it's really easy to find a time that matches my calendar and Kara's calendar. So you can note here that 1.30 slot to 3 o'clock, that's booked in there. There's some other times happening. I'm going to choose 3 p.m. on Wednesday, February 8th. I can check available versus within meeting hours and I can also set my own time zones right here. So there's a few options. We're going to keep our example here pretty simple. So I've gotten 3 p.m. and I'll click next. Has my name, has my email. I can add a note back to Kara. Can't wait and I will click book and it's going. So what it's done is it has booked a time in my calendar as Bill Lumberg. So let's switch over there and we'll check in my calendar. So there's 3 p.m. There's Bill Lumberg's office hours with Kara Coleman. It has that Teams meeting link and it even says this meeting was scheduled from the bookings page of Kara Coleman. I could reschedule it if I needed to. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's easy to do also. Back in my inbox, you'll see that that meeting came through from Kara Coleman and I can RSVP. I'll say yes. So now that is all set. Let's switch over to Kara as a final step and just see what it looks like on her end. I'm signed in as Kara Coleman and I'm in her calendar here. You can see that there is a three o'clock meeting with Bill Lumberg. It's set up as a Teams meeting. Also, now that I've created my first booking page, this is now saying edit booking page. So anytime I want to go back to my booking page and add new appointments, whether they're public or private, I just click here and it launches me right back into my bookings page so I can update it as I choose. The seventh new feature is Outlook web integration with the Edge sidebar. Now let's say that I'm here browsing on the Wikipedia site about Office Space. You know, it's an amazing movie and I'm going to go check my email. Over on the right hand side, this is the Edge sidebar. And by the way, if you don't see it, you can do control shift forward slash and it'll show and hide it. So control shift forward slash can show and hide that. But you have some options over here and there's an Outlook option. So let's click this. Oh, and there's my inbox and oh, Bill Lumberg, he sent me another mail. He needs me to come in on another Saturday. So I've got some options here, just like I would have an Outlook. Down at the bottom, you can switch to your calendar, contacts, to do, and let's go back to email. I can click on a message and it opens it up right here and I can go forwards and backwards. I can reply, reply all. I can hit the three dot menu and down here I have all the options that I normally would in Outlook just in a compact space. I can even delete it or archive it. And if I want to go full screen, I say open in full screen. Now it pops that email into the full Outlook view and I can operate on it in all these different buttons across the top. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.